Excuse me, and welcome to Song in Sign by the Formidability Opera Company, performed in the Concert Hall here at the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester. The audio description today is written and voiced by me, Mo Pickering Symes. Braille, large print and online versions of the programme are available to help you follow the action. The music includes a Maori song cycle by New Zealand composer Dame Gillian Whitehead and the world premiere of The Happy Prince by Scottish composer Ryland Gleave with words by Max Chase, which was commissioned by Formidability in 2022. In between are songs by New Zealand, German, French and English composers. A large screen above the stage shows captions to provide translation into English and to support audience members with partial hearing or deafness. Other than that, there's nothing on the stage but the grand piano on our left with its lid open and very soon our five performers. The pianist is Nigel Foster a tall, clean-shaven white man with neat hair sporting a snazzy silver-grey blazer with a dark stripe. Nigel glances frequently at the other performers through dark-framed spectacles as he plays. Two deaf actors, a woman and a man, perform centre stage alongside our soprano and tenor. The actors are a constant visual presence throughout, creatively signing the songs. The actors and singers interact with or mirror each other in shifting groupings. Often the women stand close together, representing the same character, and the men similarly express their meaning together at the same time. But they also switch to being one or two couples, or a trio, or all four moving together. I use she to refer to the female actor or to the female character played by both women at the same time. He refers most often to the male actor, but also a male character played jointly by the men. The male sparrow in The Happy Prince, played by the female actor, is also he. The storytelling is very fluid and the focus passes regularly between the performers. Actor Rhiannon May is a 23-year-old white woman of medium height and build. Her hair is brown and shoulder length with a tinge of lavender at the very ends. She wears it in Dutch braids, two plaits hugging her crown, neatly tucked behind a hearing aid. Rhiannon has rosy cheeks and blue-green eyes which can moisten with sadness. The wide legs of her strappy black jumpsuit ripple as she moves. Under the jumpsuit, she wears a long-sleeved purple top with a simple neckline and narrow vertical frills. Rhiannon's face expresses all emotions with a radiant intensity, from stunned devastation at the loss of a forest to cheeky excitement or the rapture of a dreaming lover. She takes delicate steps in black dance shoes and makes smooth, definite motions with her hands and arms. Rhiannon generally signs the lyrics of our soprano, Joanne Roughton Arnold. Joanne, who is sight impaired, is of medium height and build with a mass of long copper coloured hair. Her bouncing curls are swept off the face but otherwise loose. She's fair skinned with striking green eyes. Joanne wears black, wide leg trousers with a floaty silk top of bright turquoise blue that lifts behind her when she walks. Her earrings are of New Zealand power shell and she wears a Maori bone pendant. Joanne's face can be highly animated with the meaning of her words. Glances and tender movements intensify her strong connection with our tenor, Ben Thapper. Ben is an impressive man in his early 40s, tall and broad with merry brown eyes. He's bald on top with a salt and pepper beard and a dark moustache and eyebrows. Ben is half Nepalese and has a warm colour to his medium skin colour. He's dapper, 
He's dapper in a black shirt, blue-grey chinos and two-tone brogues in blue and brown. Like Joanne, Ben gestures, uses facial expressions and moves about the performance space to reinforce his lyrics. He sometimes sings sitting or lying on the floor. The singers sometimes do the same signing or movements as the actors, as when all four stamp their feet in the style of a haka war dance. The emotion you hear in the singers' voices continues to be acted out in their stance and expression in the longer silences or piano passages. Much of the time, Ben stands close to our other actor, Petra Dobre. Petra manipulates his tall, thin body to manifest everything from a glacier to a fern tree and its reflection in a lake, or a peacock arrogantly blinking its hundred eyes. Petra is a deaf actor who was born and grew up in Romania and is now based in Glasgow. He has white European skin, his hands show clearly against his dark green shirt. His hair is dark brown, reddish in certain lights. It has soft curls on top and is short above the ears, showing a hearing aid. He's 30, with a close-trimmed beard and small moustache, but Petra's lean face with its fine high cheekbones can transmit the youthful energy of a cocky suitor swaggering up to his sweetheart's house, or the fragility of a child who mourns the injustice of harming a bird. His round brown eyes narrow with contempt or glisten with sadness. Petra can move gracefully or give a series of clean, varied depictions in astonishingly rapid succession. He and Rhiannon show grace, precision and control in their signing. This signing is not a British Sign Language interpretation, but a fully integrated signed song performance multi-layered and highly artistic, particularly appropriate as the entire concert is about braiding, diversity and inclusion. Effectively, the actors perform a visual score which a deaf audience can read as a soundscape in their head, understanding tone and texture from the height of the actors' hands, the speed of their motions, their facial expressions and their storytelling. The deaf actors use their highly expressive faces and bodies to create visual metaphors for the lyrics and music. No props are used. If something is mentioned in the lyrics, a hill, a lake, a statue, the actors shape it with their hands and bodies. In the audio description, when I announce a bird's beak or say a waterfall, those things are signed. When I say they drink, it's a mime. When I say Rhiannon makes berries, I mean she is forming or drawing the shape of berries with her hands. If I say an actor becomes the wind, they embody it with all of their physicality, pose, movement and facial expression. Sometimes the actor represents an idea objectively, viewing it from outside as when they make a bird with their hands and flick the hands like beating wings. Other times, they represent the same concept subjectively and become the thing with their entire body. For example, becoming a bird and flapping their arms as wings. The actors switch deftly between the two modes. Many of these specially created sign phrases are compound. For example, in one brief but complex phrase, Rhiannon's hand traces a crescent to represent the moon, which then cradles an upright finger that represents her lover. Smoothly, the lover is then drawn into her breast as the character imagines drawing her lover to her, but then she removes the finger to show that her lover is not there. The embrace is empty. BSL creative consultant, Daryl Jackson, says this morphing is like handwriting as opposed to printing, with one meaning flowing into another. Surreal situations can be depicted, such as people walking on the surface of a lake. At the start of The Happy Prince, falling leaves magically end up shaping the statue of the prince, and then many swallows swoop in to mould 
the special swallow of the story, the one who befriends the prince. When Rhiannon plays a lover isolated in a tower, her arms point and join above her head like a turret, and her face gazes forward into the distance as if from the turret window. She then brings her arms down in front of her, morphing seamlessly into an attitude of prayer. The gifted performers not only become forces of nature like the wind and sea, but even enact the behaviour of atoms, molecules and the Big Bang that started the universe. Their visual metaphors are precise and instantly recognisable. To make the visual storytelling truly accessible, it's geared to a deaf understanding. Instead of knocking on the door, a lover presses a door button which makes a light flash in the house to alert the person inside. When a song refers to keeping a secret, instead of sealing the lips, the sign depicts sealing up your eloquent fingers by zipping them together. Song sign director Caroline Parker, Daryl Jackson and the performers have uniquely fused elements of Maori sign language, British sign language and visual storytelling. Sign languages from different cultures not only have different signs but also distinct styles. The signing here deliberately includes stylistic stereotypes, layering them over the BSL-based song sign like an accent. Maori sign language is referenced in an extra shimmering of the hands, which in that culture represents vibrations bouncing off nature. In the French songs, the hint of a shrug in the shoulders gives a soothing, charming feel. Other songs are signed with a more regimented movement to give a German touch. There's also a nod to gay sign variation, signing done with the elbows held tighter to the body and a certain exaggeration in the bending of the wrists. In the song Secret Invitation, Petra's character subtly points his little finger at Ben's character to show he's interested in him. Every detail has been thoughtfully choreographed. The deaf actors take their timing from visual cues given by the singers, visual cues shown on two small screens facing them, and also from lighting changes. The scene is set using dappled green light for a forest, warm yellow light for summertime or indoor scenes, moonlight for a secret tryst, dingy red light for a nightclub, two bright pillars of light to show separate lonely towers, and cold white light for scenes about death or winter. As we move through the concert, the mood grows cooler in look as well as themes. I hope that's given you a flavour of how the signing artistically and physically expresses the emotion and energy of the songs. I'll announce the song titles as they transition and I will describe the visuals I'm able to fit in between the lyrics when I will have to speak over the piano. The opening song cycle, Awa Herea, which means braided rivers, has eight songs, all set in nature. The cycle begins with wordless vocalisations exploring the soundscape of the lush New Zealand rainforest. A prayer follows and then a positive summoning of the ancestors. The fourth song, The Berries, begins sunny and warm before a storm moves in. Then the calm beauty of Lake Ianthi with its perfect reflections of trees belies the destruction of the forest further inland. The song Scale and Perspective considers the known world, depicted by Rhiannon and Petra from the vast universe to the tiniest particle. The extremely fast and short song, The Sandfly, comically shows us an irritating little insect of New Zealand. And finally, the last song picks up again the connection with the ancestors. If you're opting to listen to the through description, please keep your headset on as the concert will begin shortly. And we begin with the song cycle Awa Herea, Braided 
rivers. Under dappled green light, the two signing actors make their way onto the stage. The soprano and tenor move past us through the auditorium, singing together with the pianist. The first song is Vocalese, in which the New Zealand rainforest soundscape is explored. Rhiannon and Petra stroll past each other, gazing up and around in wonder. Petra's hand shimmers. Rhiannon builds the landscape. A bird's beak. A tree shoots up. Joanne and Ben are birds. They flap. Ben traces a waterfall. Petra makes it tumble over the rocks. Rhiannon remembers. Spiders descend. The birds flirt. The birds approach each other. They 
smile at the return of ancestral spirits. They stir the air towards us. They wish the spirit to visit us. May it come to you all soon. May it come to you also. Awaherea, braided rivers, braided lines, braided voice. They step back and make a mountain top. Rivulets of water meander down. A single plaited thread endures. weaving its way down the mountain sides, their fingers leading the way, intertwining with each other's river. Joanne connects and flows, Ben joins them. Braided rivers, braided vines, braided voice. Plaited together are strong. Rhiannon and Petra, one arm reaching behind the other's back, undulate their twining fingers, weave the river narrow then wider. Life blossoms, a bird, creatures, insects, plants. They become water, become leaping fish. A kiwi scratches around under a fern tree. Ben drops the water over the fall and shouts as it crashes to join the river below. Braided rivers, braided lines, braided voice. They shimmer upwards. The water flows. The berries. Petra becomes a cicada. Bulging eyes, a ribbed vibrating body. to him inhales deeply. Rhiannon wipes her red lips, makes berries. Their faces fierce.
wails wildly, a tree in the wind. She and Petra slow down, their branches high. The wind swirls round them. Joanne plucks a berry. Lake Ianthi. Petra and Rhiannon face each other across a space. They mirror each other, bend forward, arms reaching with the palms downward. As they sidestep to move towards us, their palms define the ripples on the wide lake. They make trees on the shore. arms thrashing, the tree falls. There is horror on Joanne's face. The women look at each other. Rhiannon steps back, stares at the devastated forest. She passes Petra, who sees her expression and sets off to investigate the direction she came from. Petra and Ben find the wrecked land. Frightened. Trees gone. The descendants of Tane the forest god are laid low. Rihanna remembers back, looks forward with fear. All four reach forward and embrace the ancestors into them, laying three fingers on each ribcage like a carving of Tane, god of forests. The forest is within them and they mourn its loss. They step back. Scale and perspective, Rihanna looks at her hands. She spreads her body wide, whirls round and spirals down. She's crouching tiny, plucking a molecule. She unwinds herself back to greatness. Rhiannon and Petra become animals and plants, spreading trails of variation. Bellbird. Butterfly. Molecule. Oh, oh, oh. Bee. 
Albatross. Palm tree whale. Rhiannon and Petra stand together, their hands are flurry as they show molecules interacting, their arms rubbing past each other like strands of DNA. Their flickering fingers form a pulsating ball. They sink together, crouch. The pulsing ball grows and shrinks, grows and shrinks, pulses in and out, in and finally expands in an explosion, a big bang in the universe. Joanne takes a particle and marvels at it. Petra shows the microbes sinking through layers. Rhiannon whirls round, examines an atom. The sand fly. They bat away insects. Petra buzzes gleefully at Rhiannon. She swipes, he escapes. He mocks her. She swats him and he crumbles with a comically squashed face. The others scratch their arms furiously. All four face front. Their faces grow serious. They stomp. The waters of the braided rivers flow. Many coloured threads woven together. A strong woven cloth. Joanne joins Petra and Rhiannon, her fingers weaving downstream. Many streams are braiding, twining, looping together, always downhill. The surface of the water is flickering, fluttering. Ben's fingers join theirs, creating the rivers. Ben is at the start of the line from high up through Petra and Rhiannon down to Joanne. The water flows and tumbles. The vines braid, the lines braid, the rivers meander and entwine, endlessly weaving together. Nature's treasures show the essence of olden times. Now, a little... <laughs> they empower you to receive our song.
Now a little fly made by Petra's fingertips buzzes and lands on Ben's shoulder. A fly. I could see this fly with unprejudiced eyes. I should see his body was metallic blue. No! Rhiannon the fly looks pleased with herself. Small again, she and Petra buzz around the place and land on the piano next to Nigel. Then Petra moves close behind her and they stand wide to make the body of the fly together. His wings are frosty His legs fine Big bug eyes. And he breathes as I do. Petra, his arms around her, makes the breath pulse in and out. Peacocks. The women strut around as the pea hen. The men puff out their chests as the peacock. Petra holds his arms low out to the sides, blinking to the rhythm, showing the whites of his eyes. He flashes his fingers. He wafts his tail. Pressed towards the pea hen, the pea hen curls her lip, shrugs her shoulders. I can't be bothered by that now. A dismissive flick of the hand, his crest wilts. Says the pea hen. Yesterday, a mouse ran along this wall. Rhiannon scurries with her hand. The mouse dodges. The peahen catches it. The peacock looks downhearted. King David. Petra gazes sadly ahead. Behind Rhiannon crowns him. Her hands wrap round and smooth his breast. and he leans towards her yearningly, as if in a dream, as if she's plucking his heartstrings. Oh, 
sends him this way and that, he's lost. She grows a garden around him. He walks on the spot. She draws a crescent, makes a singing bird. A nightingale hidden in a cypress tree, charmed up and on. It flies slowly. David lifted his sad eyes into the dark past bird alights. Tell me, thou little bird that singest, holds out my grief to thee. The bird flutters away. and swoops as he walks. The nightingale's wings morph into the crown on David's head. He closes his eyes and calms as the crown dissolves away from him. Mignon's song. Imagining her lover, she asks him to return to the radiant land where they were happy. in her heart and protects it.
Sorrowful, sways, her smile fades. She rests her chin on her hand and gazes, lost in a reverie. dance song. Petra and Ben are reluctant menfolk being encouraged to dance by their female partners. Rhiannon waltzes gaily. shrug, head over to the bar and pick up beer steins. The women curtsy to each other and run off. The men clink glasses. Secret invitation.
touches at Petra's hair. slowly weaving path. They smile at each other. They look about, contemplating, their faces soft and dreamy. Facing down, they draw a flat, wide circle, the sunshine on the path. Rhiannon makes a winding road. the shore. They gaze into each other's eyes. They hold hands, the other hand on heart, then turn to each other and hold both hands. They raise their twined hands slightly and higher and up and slowly apart, still gazing.
the light dims. <clears throat> Only as does the pianist. And that brings to a close the first half of the concert. Nigel Foster takes up his position at the grand piano and Ben stands nearby. Joanne and Rhiannon come on. As Ben looks up, whistling. Each woman mimes walking through her door and shutting it behind her. They go upstairs and get busy applying their lipstick. Petra swaggers up, smooths his eyebrows and presses the door button twice. Two flashes of light alert the women. They hurry to the window and peer down. door seizes her man's hand and off they skip, both couples beaming. To the land where there is war. The women walk, unaware of each other. They move into isolated towers. They lean one hand on a window sill, then the other, and look out at a distant horizon. Rhiannon holds her heart.
remembers his kiss, embraces the empty air. She sees the setting sun and wonders where he is. Her hand on her heart trembles as it beats. She turns hopefully to the door. She opens the door. Disappointment on her face. shimmering fingers arc through the passage of the sun, then morph into the roof of the tower blocking out the light, and then into praying hands. She reaches out of the tower window, arms achingly empty, and presses to herself the dream of him. Each woman leans on her windowsill, scanning the horizon. A widow bird sat mourning for her love. Petra's hands beat like wings. The bird lands on a tree. drift down from the trees. The river flows, water tumbles over the water wheel, which slows and judders to a frozen stop. Ben sits on the floor. Petra watches out of a window with childlike, wide eyes. 
Rhiannon becomes the snow which brushes his cheek and becomes tears. Snow. The child hugs himself, the snow settles. The song of the secret. Rhiannon searches the sky. Petra hunches, hand outstretched, his fingers close on nothing. The air stirs slowly. Stars twinkle into the ocean. underwater with loss in his eyes. Flowers bloom and collapse. He relaxes, smiles, safe in that memory. He stands taller. Song of a nightclub proprietress. 
Joanne and Rhiannon hobble into the nightclub. Joanne takes a drag, stubs out her ciggy. With a cheeky smile. I was In slow motion, she taps her watch. sunset. The men come back on. Ben holds hands with Joanne, Petra with Rhiannon. The two couples face each other, walk forward and pass closely through without noticing each other. Surreally, they walk slowly on the surface of the lake, calmly taking in the sky, noticing a pair of birds. They look backwards at a distressing memory and forwards to where they are now. The lyrics are, we have gone hand in hand through joys and distress. Now we rest from our wanderings high above the quiet land. Around us the valleys slope down, the skies have begun to darken. Only two larks, recalling a dream, soar up into the haze. Come and leave them to fly. Soon it will be time to sleep. We must not lose our way in this solitude. A vast, silent peace, so deep in sunset glow. How weary we are with wandering. Could this, perhaps, be death?
With foreheads together, Petra and Rhiannon touch noses briefly in a kiss. Together they make one bird. It flies slowly. Each couple gazes into the distance. Then they embrace. And while they embrace, one by one, with a raising of the arm and flutter of the fingers, each person's soul flies up and away. First is Ben's spirit. Then Joanne's. All four hold still, arms raised, and then lower their arms. The light dims. <laughs> and brightens. The happy prince. Rhiannon stands huddled. Petra becomes the wind. He blows all over her. She shivers. The wind swirls. Petra casts a gust at her. She's buffeted. Petra becomes a tree shedding leaves. Rhiannon catches the leaves. into the statue. Petra stands still as the prince, then makes a flock of birds. small birds touch Rhiannon, she becomes a swallow. hides his head in his wing.
the swallow alights on the prince, sleeps, then shakes something off his wings. smiles rigidly. Three fingers form the prince's heart. shows the town. Petra huddles and stitches, then grimaces and pulls a blanket up over him. Swallow nods. The bird flies on its missions.
individual people. The prince stands looking out. Rhiannon becomes snow and ice. The swallow shivers and flaps stiffly, head nuzzled on the prince's shoulder. looks up at him. Folk break up the statue. Townsfolk leave. Two different townspeople arrive at the remains of the fire. The flames die down.
two embers and ash. From utter stillness, the swallow's spirit flickers and gently rises on rippling wings. The prince's heart spirals up and away from the fire. on the ground, Joanne kneels by him. The swallow smiles softly with a faraway look. is the swallow.
the bird and the heart spiral upwards together. And the five performers stand in line, Nigel Foster from the piano, Ben Trapper, Joanne Routon Arnold, Rihanna May, and Petra Dobro taking bow after bow with big smiles on their faces. And then head off. And that brings to a close this performance of Song in Sign. Again, the singers were Joanne Routon Arnold and Ben Thapper. The actors were Rhiannon May and Petra Dobre. And the pianist was Nigel Foster. It was directed by Caroline Parker and the BSL creative consultant was Daryl Parker. There is one further performance on the 1st of March at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland in Glasgow. We hope you've enjoyed the concert and that you have a safe journey home. <laughs>